Good job, young man. Thanks, Mr. Polly. The store does look pretty, doesn't it, Jimmy Lee? I don't think I've had a head start in Christmas in years. You know something? Christmas is my favorite time of the year. You should have seen Jonah's face when I told him I was going to take him out next week and we'll chop down a Christmas tree. He was thrilled. I heard. He can't wait. It's a great kid. I really appreciate the interest you've taken in him. You must have someone back in Port Charles that's waiting for you to come back. No. I find that hard to believe. Look, it's true that the Quartermains are my family, but we've never been that close. Must have a girl. Nope. Oh, why not? I mean, a, a guy as handsome as you, I'm sure that there are loads of girls in Fort Charles who just... Charity, love Charity, look, look, uh, the truth of the matter is, I haven't been close, really close with anybody since Celia. Who's Celia? Celia was my wife. We're divorced. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be. It probably was for the best. Why? What happened? Well, you see, it was like this. I fell in love with a vision, you know how? A beautiful lady in a blue dress. She was in love with another guy at the time, and I had to have her, so I didn't give up till I did. And, um... It didn't work out. Why didn't it? A lot of reasons. Matter of fact, uh... It was mostly money. Anyway, there's nobody in Port Charles for me. Nobody except my best friend, Buzz Stryker. Tell me something. Why aren't you close with the Quartermains? <clears throat> well, um, that's another long story. Let's see. Uh, short version. Short version. I never could feel like I was part of the family, no matter how badly I wanted to be. Oh, that's too bad. There's a reason. You see, I'm uh, Edward Quatermain's illegitimate son. I didn't know that. I'm sorry. Hey, don't be. Look, Charity. There's no place I'd rather be than here in Partuck with you unless you don't want me around. You're not trying to get rid of me, are you? No. No, of course not. Good. I... And I hope you mean what you say because I meant every word of what I said. There's no place I'd rather be than here with you and Potter. Simon! Alan, what are you doing here? I came to find out what the hell you're trying to do. Simon, I don't understand why you're so angry. Angry? I'm furious. Don't you see what he's trying to do? At least no. you waited till the customer left. Now, what do you want? I want to know what the hell you're doing here. I'm doing what you asked me to do. I asked you to come here and check up on Charity and Jonah. I asked you to find out if they were all right. I asked you to do that three weeks ago. Well, as you can see, I'm doing just fine, and so is Jonah. Why didn't you call me and tell me that? Charity needed my help. And what kind of help are you giving her? Listen, I know what you're thinking, and you're completely wrong. Jimmy Lee has been a perfect gentleman. Well, that's totally out of character for him, so you better protect yourself. You have no right to say that. What Charity does with her personal life is none of your business, Alan. Is that how you feel? I thought you knew how much I loved you. Oh, come on, get off it, will you? You gave up that right when you back, went back to poor Charles, to your wife, your kids, and your money. I care so much about you, Charity, I don't want to see you get hurt. Hurt? How am I going to get hurt? By him. He's a womanizer. He's never been any good with any woman. That's a lie, you creep. Really? Tell her about Celia. Tell her why Celia left you. I don't want to hear about it, Alan, and I don't need your protection. You have a wife and children up in Port Charles, and I will not be accused of husband stealing. Charity, I told you, my marriage is over. Is it? I mean, have you come here to tell me that you're getting a divorce? Because if you haven't, there's nothing left for us to talk about. Excuse me. I'm warning you, Jimmy Lee, I'm not going to give her up without a fight. If you want to fight, pal, I'm right here. I'm telling you she's mine. You better leave her alone. Alan. Alan, why don't you just go back to poor Charles, huh? Charity doesn't want to talk to you. I'm not leaving here until she does. What is it that you want? 
You're the one who walked out on her. You went back to Monica. What do you expect her to do? Spend the rest of her life waiting for you while you make up your mind and get enough guts to leave Monica? It's between me and Charity. It's none of your business. Hey, look. I'm making it my business. Now get the hell out of town. She's my woman. You understand that? What do you mean, your woman? Charity. How dare you? How dare you call me your woman? I apologize. I love you, Charity. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I, I thought you loved me, too. I loved a man named Simon. Not a man with a wife and two children. You're not even ready to leave them, and I'd never ask that of you. I have no intention of giving up my children. I wanted to bring them here. I wanted you to be their mother. They have a mother, and you have a life in Port Charles you are not ready to leave. You bet he's not. Because if he left his Monica, he wouldn't have a dime. I don't care about the money, Charlie. Isn't this what this whole charade was about? What are you talking about? What charade? Jimmy Lee. Come on, Simon. Why don't you tell her about the whole charade, Simon? I will tell her. Not here. Not with you here. I'm going to check into a motel. You better not be here when I come back. I don't believe it. He's a completely different man. Yeah. He is a different man, Charity. He's not Simon. He never was Simon. Alan Quatermain pretended that he had amnesia just because he wanted to punish his wife. It was all an act. He knew who he was all the time. Did that to punish Monica? Yeah. For a man to do that for his wife, he's got to be madly in love with her.